Good afternoon, sword friends. On the chair today, we have the Huey Unakubi Zakari. Give it a nice little overview with the shadow in the way. Really like the Saya. It's almost a perfect sword with a few minor flaws, but let's get to it here. So, it's first thing to note is it's wrapped extremely tight, very, very tight. The fittings, ironically, are identical to the fittings on the Munatoshi Viper, that little vine theme. I suspect that they may be glued on because they're super tight and there's like no play in them at all, which is nice. Got the uh, Moko theme Suba. I have no idea what that means. But there it is. So the Samagawa is actually of nice quality. It's, I mean, not big ass nodules. I mean, nice quality for production. You know what I mean. Again, but it's a lot shinier than on other swords and it's fairly consistent for the nodule sizes and what have you. And here we come to the first issue. All right. Now, when you got it like that, the way you'd hold it, on every single other one of my katanas, the high knot is on the left and the lower knot is on the right. That forces you to choke up a bit and it leads to the thumb bone colliding with the wrist bone towards the end of the cut. It's not a deal breaker, but it's definitely something that I had to adapt to. But other than that, the Suka is actually very, very nice. I, I like the way it's tight and there's Hishigami in there. You can't really spot any of the wood through. I mean, it's very well done for a budget area, budget-ish sword, I guess you'd call it. I mean, it's pretty clean, and like I said, aside from the uh, knot issue, it's pretty good. So, now, real quick, we'll do the, uh, this is a, this is a good plus. Very, 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 very nice Habaki fit in the Saya. And let's get to said Saya. It's got this cool pattern, which actually matches my fucking samurai bathrobe so gonna probably pair those up in a future video like how they're bigger and then they get smaller towards the, the fucking edges it's just a nice touch but there is one issue with the saya you hear that like the koi gucci Beautiful fit. It's not going anywhere, but there's some rattle. Which, eh, what you gonna do? The second issue is the Ito wrap masquerading as a Segeo. As you can see, it's very thin. That's Ito wrap, not Segeo. But again, not a deal breaker. So, bear with me for a second, and we will get to the fun part. Here we go. Now this is what I, oh, hang on. Before we get to the fun part, gotta note the Koi Gucci. Very, very clean for a production sword. There is none of the black shit that is, well, maybe a tiny bit of the black shit. But, as far as fucking production swords go, it's very clean. It's got that one little chunk that was for me in a fucking sloppy draw. Didn't come like that. And like I said, it fucking holds the hibaki fucking beautifully. So, can't complain. Another thing is, I knew this getting it, but... There's no horn around there, which you just got to be very careful in your draws because, I mean, that has a purpose behind it. It's to stop you from cutting your hand. It's not like a visual or aesthetic thing. There's a purpose behind it. 
but what you gonna do? Maybe I can have somebody fit one on there in the future. But I'm gonna get done rambling about the boring stuff and get to the fun part, which is the blade. It's a fucking really, really, really sharp. I mean, fucking razor, laser, fucking, this may be the sharpest sword that I've come into contact with yet. The Kasaki from the back, it's a Unikubi or Cormorant's neck blade, so it's got a very well-defined fucking Kasaki there. And another thing to note is there's no counter polish. On all the other Unikubis I have, they kind of demarcate the Yakote with a counter polish, which this sword does not do. But that's cool, makes it a little different, stand out from the others. And like I said, everything's straight. Probably doesn't look straight with my shoddy camera work, but the blade's fucking nice. I haven't taken the handle off, but the pictures showed a lot of nice file work on the Nikago. And eventually I'll fucking take it apart and maybe do a video on it or whatever. But there's the Hamon. It's like a rounded heartbeat almost. I don't know what you call it. It's hard. There's a spot of sire rub from it fucking coming across the ocean. And there's definitely a lot of cutting scratches from me using it in the last few days. But it's a nice blade nonetheless. Now... There's another thing which, I mean, it depends what you're looking for in a sword. The point of balance is very, very, very close to the fucking Suka. It's like three and a half, maybe 3.75 inches at most, which it's really, it's a lot closer to the handle than your average katana, which, I mean, it's really good for tip control. I mean, I feel connected to the tip when I swing it. I've landed almost all of the doubles I've tried with it, and it's just a very agile, nice sword. So... I don't know what else to say. Like, when you're doing your, I mean... Eido in quotation marks, like, it's really easy to stop the blade. Like, when you're coming on the downward cut and you're supposed to, you know, stop it parallel to the ground, I can actually do that with this one, unlike a lot of my other swords. And the way that your wrist bone collides with your thumb bone when you get to a certain point in the cut also helps that along very nicely. But, like I said, it's a fucking very, very nice blade. Um, might send the handle off to be re-wrapped, because I'm a huge fan of the Katate Maki at this point, and I like the way it creates a shelf for your pinky and your ring finger to rest on. And like I said, the knots, I don't know if any of you out there know the proper way fucking the Japanese sword should be knotted, let me know. But if I look at all my other ones, this is the only one where the knots are in that position. So, who knows. But anyhow, other than those couple minor issues, the sire rattle, the Ito masquerading as Sageo, and the knot placement... It's a nice sword. Like, I really... The point of balance issue, that, I, it's kind of growing on me. It's very light and nimble. I think it comes in at 2 pounds, 3 ounces, if I'm not mistaken. So it's definitely on the lighter side. It's no 2 pound, 11 ounce fucking beast. So, I don't know. Like I said, had it. Only a few days now, but I've done a lot of cutting with it. There's the uh, cormorant's neck cutout of the blade. And I mean, the, the back part is fairly even, much more even than the viper. It's got the proper bohe termination. And I mean, like I said, it's a nice sword. Oh, another thing. Hard to catch, but I mean, you couldn't... I, don't even think I could fit 
a fucking slice of paper in the gap between the hibaki and the blade that's very well fitted and I'm not doing a good job of showing it but as you can see there's a very very lack lack of a gap in between the two which is nice like it's very well put together the wrap is nice and tight it's already held up a lot longer than several other production katanas i fucking fucked with in the backyard so we'll see how she goes in a while and like i said i might eventually have the handle re-wrapped but all in all it's a nice sword I'd say if there's a Huawei that really calls to you, that you really like, I'd go for it. Like, the downsides are by no means deal breakers and can all be fairly easily fucking, um, easily, uh, fixed. I'm trying to think of a bigger, better word for fixed, but I'm drawing a blank here, so. Anyhow, there she is. Definitely gets my slash of approval, not like a very fluid, fucking beautiful slash, but a slash of approval nonetheless. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.